And we'll soon know if we have a winner. The second batch looked pretty good. Good morning and welcome to Hacienda Golf Club. Um, this, host, this course has been hosting golfers from around the world for over 100 years and was founded in 1920. So after three years at Friendly Hills, we decided to just make some changes and see how that would affect the turnout. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that you support the Live Like Jack Foundation as we were able to sell out 75 days in advance. So we'll always be grateful for your support and thank you. Uh, this is a very special day for us, and we're delighted to have you here at this special event, just commonly known as the 2022 Live Like Jack Golf Tournament. And we're excited to get this tournament started, and I would like to introduce Father Dave Henney, pastor from St. Bruno's Parish, for the opening prayer. Oh, here he is. Good morning. Let's place ourselves in the presence of God, and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we arrive 
grateful for all the blessings we have already received today already. We give you thanks for this beautiful day, this beautiful weather, this challenging course that will test our skills, for the wonderful team of hardworking volunteers who have just covered every detail of this very important tournament, and especially for the heroism, the faith, and the dedication of the Salas family who have turned the passing of their son into a life-saving event for so many, for hundreds, maybe thousands. So we ask that you bless them, and especially bless all the golfers who have come here today for this important cause. Bless them today, bless their families at home. Help us to enjoy this wonderful, wonderful, very, very important tournament. We ask this in your name, amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Now we'd like to introduce Detective Tom Nordback of the Whittier Police Department to lead us all in the Pledge of Allegiance and the flag is to my left at 9 o'clock. <coughs> all right, gentlemen, if you could all remove your hats. I know it's hot. Thank you. And ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you guys, thank you Fred. You know, the Pledge of Allegiance is really a piece of writing genius. It begins with I and it ends with all. Okay, now it's time for a very special guest. And it's a great pleasure to introduce Anne Marie Francis, who will sing our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud? stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the lamparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the raucous red glare the that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the Thank you, Anne Marie. Okay, so we are streaming live right now on Facebook and YouTube. And there are many fans who couldn't make it here today, and many of you here to participate in the Live Like Jack Golf Ball helicopter drop. And as much as I'd like to announce the winners, there's 12 of them. So we'll get it all settled. 12 balls, they put a giant, it had to be a 12 inch cup versus the regular, what is it, a four inch cup. And unlike last year, we were at what's known as 60 AGL above ground level. I said, this year we need to get down to 30. So you saw we were pretty low and I looked at the hole and I just said, too many balls are gonna go in and sure enough, 12 went in. So um, the winners, we obviously, we're fundraising, so we're not giving away $24,000, but they will divide the $2,000 uh, prize that we do have. So we're grateful for that.
Thank you. No, it's going to take three. Uh, once again, so special gratitude that we extend our appreciation to all of you in attendance and a special thank you for those who have participated for the past four consecutive years, as well as all of our sponsors and banners and signs that are out on the course, throughout the course, but give yourself a round of applause if you've been here for all four <laughs> golf tournaments. We are grateful and we continue to grow with the Live Like Jack Foundation. Thank you. So four and a half years ago, in front of a standing room only crowd at St. Bruno's Parish, I shared the following. I don't know why things happen the way they do. To us, it's, it's a mystery. But what I do know is on September 11, September 11, 2007, Jessica and I were blessed with a beautiful baby boy. And God blessed us with Jack, and little did we know that he would be our 10-year gift. And we went to work, and it was a labor of love. We held nothing back in our power and spirit to raise Jack in a way God intended. And Jack was raised with love, appreciation, gratitude, empathy, kindness, humor, and a deep respect for others. It's very interesting, when you first met Jack, from the time at a very early age, Jack would look you in the eye, and he'd shake your hand, and he'd smile. And that was simplicity at its best, and that was Jack. Human contact, confidence, and a warmth for anyone who crossed his path. He made us very proud. Jack, from an early age, was excited about everything. He was a huge fan of all the Rocky movies, and he could name every single character in the entire Star Wars movie franchise, as well as watch the final scene in the movie Rudy over and over again. And Jack loved many sports, and his favorite was football. And during a televised game from the time he was a toddler, when a team would line up for an extra point or a field goal, Jack would line up as the kicker in front of the big screen, and as soon as the ball was snapped in health, Jack would emulate the kicker in the game, going through the kicking motion and pretend to kick the ball through the uprights. It was a joy to watch, and you know what? He did it all the time, Saturday, Sunday, Monday night football. Uh, Jack, as he got older, wanted to play tackle football, and we weren't against it, but we thought it was a better route for him to go play youth football, the La Mirada flag youth football. And he developed into a pretty solid wide receiver. And we used to play catch all the time. There's not one time where he said, can we go play catch? And I said, no. We're out on the street. Wherever we are, we always pitch the rock. That being said, I believe, as many of you here believe, and you've heard me say this time and time again, I believe one of the greatest pleasures any father can have is watching his son score touchdowns. And Jack scored a lot on Friday nights in La Mirada. It brought me great joy. He dreamed of playing in the NFL for the Seattle Seahawks, his favorite team, and I would always tell him when he punched one through the uprights in our living room, Jack, you're my NFL kicker. And I shared this dream as well. Considering his interest in sports and great films, Jack remained dialed in at school. And Jack consistently brought home the grades and honors that exceeds most parents' expectations. Jessica, my lovely wife's unrelenting effort in making sure Jack's homework was done, that he was prepared for school every day. Lunches made, teeth brushed, bathed, well-groomed, dressed, and ready to get after it daily. And we held Jack up to higher expectations, and we never allowed him to be complacent. Jack was a good boy. He was smart, witty, and possessed, possessed a great sense of humor. In January of 2018, in his final days, he was reading more books than Jessica and I combined. And that's a true story. He had a library that was second to none for a 10-year-old. He was raised hearing me tell him over and over again, all leaders are readers. And he really took it to heart. Principal List and honor roll. That's who he was, and we were proud of what we did with our son. God's son. If Jack were an adult, one might say that he was a man's man at the early age of 10, and Jessica and I believed he would have a great impact on the world, and he would be a man of influence and benevolence as he grew older. Of course, we had no clue that God wanted him back so soon. So we were blessed with this little angel for just over 10 years. He brightened our lives, and it's obvious to Jessica, his older brother Jeffrey, and his sister Hannah and myself that he meant so much to so many and touched the lives of many. I met with Jack at bedtime almost every night with a few exceptions. We would pray the Lord's Prayer and a lot of Hail Marys. But it was the personal prayers that had the most impact on Jack. 
I would ask the Lord to keep us safe, happy, healthy, wealthy in spirit and prosperity, and share God's good works and God's good will, as well as help those who cannot help themselves. And he loved it. And me too. February 1st, 2018. In our home and without warning, Jack suffered a severe asthma attack. He passed out in our living room from a lack of oxygen, oxygen, and then his heart stopped. Jessica and I, while we waited for first responders to arrive, gave him CPR, but to no avail. Jack was rushed to the ER where physicians were able to restart his heart and put him on a respirator to get him breathing with assistance. 32 minutes had passed. That afternoon, Jessica and I, and many of you here watching from home, began praying, praying for a miracle and that the good Lord would bring Jack back to us. Later in the day, doctors informed us that we would not be getting that miracle. Jack never regained consciousness. We did receive, however, several other miracles. Many of you here were able to start the healing process, knowing he wasn't coming back while Jack lied in his hospital bed. Jack's friends, family, and classmates were able to visit, lie down by his side, and speak to him. On February 3rd, that Saturday, 2018, Jack Salas was declared deceased by the state of California. It was on this day, with the assistance of our mother-in-law advising us that Jessica and I made the best decision we could have possibly made in our circumstances, and Jack became an organ donor through one legacy. Even in death, Jack continued helping family and friends as they paid their respects, visiting him through February 5th as one legacy searched to identify potential organ recipients. The final goodbyes came on the evening of February 5th. Jack was wheeled into the operating room, and with hours of us leaving him, Jack, in one of his final selfless acts, saved the life of another child. That's a miracle. That is a miracle. And there were more children and adults to follow. So Jack lives on. Not only in his organ recipients, but his spirit lives on in Jessica, myself, his brother, his sister, and every one of you here today. That's how Jack lived. Five lives saved so far, with many more to come. Now, our family's lives move in one direction, and that's forward. We are always thinking about a brighter future, and the Live Like Jack Foundation is all about a brighter future. We are committed to helping as many people as possible through organ donation, helping foster children, and now we're exploring mentoring children who have been raised in fatherless homes. 80% of all single parent homes are run by the head of the household, and that's a woman. We'd like to make a change in that. A final note. Thank you. A final note. And you've heard me say this before, but fathers and mothers have been suffering the loss of a child since the beginning of time. A hundred years ago, when this course was built, the same parents didn't even have a photograph of their lost loved one. And I can't imagine how painful that is. A few decades ago, parents were fortunate to have a simple school photograph of their child. While Jack was alive, we took lots and lots of pictures. And we have been blessed in our eyes, as Jessica and I have thousands of images of our beautiful boys, some of which you'll see on the course today, hundreds of videos, and a handful of sound bites that will last forever in the cloud. For this, we will always be grateful. Today we have two special guests. They're not going to speak for very long, but they're very important to us. I want to take a moment to share with us how important organ donation is and how it saved their lives. And first up, we have one of our dear friends and an organ recipient. Please welcome, with a loud round of applause, Mr. Jose Loza. Good morning. My name is Jose Loza, and I had type 1 diabetes for 35 years. Two and a half of those years, I was on dialysis. And three years ago, I had 
a dual organ transplant. I received a kidney and a pancreas. These organs got me off of dialysis and I'm no longer diabetic. My organ donor, my organ donor was a 31 year old, 31 year old who lost his life. This thoughtful young man is a stranger to me, but I am forever grateful for the thoughtless. I'm trying to, trying to. For the thoughtless act of becoming an organ donor. For all of you here who are organ donors, thank you. For all of you who are not, please think of all the people who need organs in this, in this life. They have to fight to live and they are on waiting lists that can average up to eight years long for an organ. Please consider being an organ donor and help someone else in this life. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Okay, now I know it's hot. We're almost there, we're almost there. So our next guest has got a couple of things to say. I would like to introduce, and just keep in mind, we know of five lives that Jack has saved so far. We've met four of them, three little girls, and if you were with us during the pandemic when we only had 72 golfers, we had Pablo from Tulare, California, who is 34 now and received our son Jack's left kidney. Uh, there's Lizzie, who received our son's heart valve, and she's in Wisconsin, real young, but we're hoping to have her up here in the next few years. So right now, I'd like to introduce you to Carlos Osuna, who received our son Jack's right kidney. And now, Mr. Carlos. Asuna. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Thank you. Hi, Fred. And Jessica. and all his families and all friends. I am Carlos Osuna and I'm blessed to be here with every one of you who loves and live like Jack. Father God, Jesus Christ has keep been giving me the big blessing by being a receiver of a Jack Wright kidney that really changed my life and my whole family and our life perspective. by giving me now a new life opportunity to be part of a new, lovely Jack's pattern and family and friends. And I really love you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
So here's something I want you to think about. Right here, organ donation. That man is alive and well and a grandfather multiple times over because of our son. And we hope that his children and his grandchildren have an impact on this planet as well as all the other recipients. So thank you, Carlos. All right, it's almost time to play golf. But right now, just a few words, the last speaker. I want to introduce a man that makes it happen. He is the man behind the scenes at One Legacy, the CEO of One Legacy, and a friend of the Live Like Jack Foundation, Mr. Tom Moan. Fred, thank you very, very much, and thank each and every one of you for joining us all out here at the Live Like Jack golf tournament. I can't think of a better cause in, in the world and in life, and I can't think of a better life to celebrate than one's so already fulfilled and fulfilling many, many more in his passing but sharing the gift of life. At One Legacy, we work 24-7 with families like the Salas family around all of Southern California to help people make the choice to give the gift of life and, and save others. Part of our work is to help in the community, is to help dispel the myths, to get the pink dot, people to check off of the pink dot, and get past the myth that doctors won't try to save them. You heard Fred describe very well that they, doctors worked diligently to try to save Jack's life, but in the end, sometimes they cannot. But that did not stop Fred and Jenny and the family from making the decision to give the gift of life it, because they knew that they could make Jack's life complete and fulfill his life cut way too short by helping save and heal others. Um, the gift of organs, eyes, tissues can save 75, more than 75 people uh, around the country and around the world. Uh, and it is at events like this that we try to get the word out to remind people of the importance, the critical importance of checking that box of the DMV and saying, yes, I want to be a donor because only that way will we be able to save all the lives, like we just heard from this gentleman here who had his life saved and his family returned and his life returned to him through the gift of Jack's kidney. So most importantly though, and one of the reasons I love to come to the Live Like Jack tournament is Jack's life is a reminder. It's an inspiration to all of us of why we strive to give the gift of life. Our goal is to inspire people to donate, and Jack is the greatest inspiration we have to share that message. So, Fred, Jen, Jessica, thank you very, very much for holding this tournament and inviting One Legacy. Thank you. Stand by. All right, so a lot of people every now and then ask me, so where does all the money go? Well, our endowments, the vast majority of them are to One Legacy because they were with us when we needed them, and it was an amazing, experience as we reflect back on it. And then, of course, we are helping a lot of foster children, and that's important to remember because there's a lot of foster children out there that don't have either parent. And if we look to the future, we have to think about development for those children so they become highly productive adults, not just existing adults, but productive adults. And that's one of the directions that One Legacy and Live Like Jack Foundation is moving. And of course, we would like to make a move to get the DMV an opt-out versus an opt-in, and that's something we'll work on. So that way you would have to actually opt out to not be an organ donor. But at this time, Jessica and I, Jeffrey and Hannah, and the entire Live Like Jack Foundation group would like to present this $10,000 check to Tom Moan and One Legacy. All right, that concludes the opening ceremonies. A lot of you out there, oh, thank God, it's over. Okay, so it's time to play golf, and again, I want to thank you for your attention and participation. There's plenty of food and drink on the course. There's a taco bar and a keg on the sixth hole, sliders and pulled pork sandwiches on the 14th hole. Those sandwiches are compliments and uh, donations from Orchard's Barbecue. Draft Picks is the taco bar on the sixth hole. And when you complete your round, we invite you upstairs to the clubhouse banquet room for dinner. Now, you may not need it, but cocktail hour starts at 5.30, and dinner is at 6.15, and tonight's entertainment is rich. 
We have James Banger's big band. We'll have a 20 piece band up there, two vocalists playing Frank Sinatra. All the big band hits, and it's going to be great pieces of uh, music for your entertainment. So, again, a reminder there's no mulligans out here today, no breakfast balls, all right? Play well and have a good time, but don't bring in some 52, 54, because we know in this course, not possible. Last note, the Live Like Jack Easy Up is up between the 9th and the 18th green. It's a premium cocktail bar. It is a pit stop. It's not a layover. So we want to get done in five and a half hours or sooner, so let's try and keep the pace and play going. All right, have a good time, and thank you once again for being here.